Welcome to Cabin Lake Baits. Today we're going to go ahead and make a musky lure, musky top water, out of a wood dowel that you can pick up in any hardware store. This is a one inch diameter. And for the components, we've got a prop, a little kicker blade, a swivel and split ring, two eighth ounce lead weights. This will be to keel it. Them 80 pound split rings for the hooks, one out owners, number four hollow beads, and a saw and blade knife. And we're going to go ahead and cut this down to five inches. Alright, so there we have our five inch chunk. Wasn't the cleanest cut, but that's alright. We'll use this as our tapered end where the blade's going to go. Now we're going to go ahead and start shaping it up with our blade knife. Then we got a good taper going in the back uh, third of the lure. Now we're going to go ahead and slope the head up. So there we have a very generic shape, cigar shape, blunt nose, a little bit tapered on the back end. I'm going to go ahead and put in a line through. This will be a line through lure with this. 051 wire here and then after that I'm going to go ahead and sand it down but first I'm going to put a line through all right so there we have the wire fitted in there pretty tight fit obviously I'm going to sand it down before I actually put it in and this little line tie up here will be sunk in a little bit farther but ideally you do want that line tie to be below the nose that way it's going to get some lift from your line if you were to put it above the nose it's going to pull down you don't want that for a top water all right next we're actually going to go ahead and put in a couple of the keel weights so this one will ride right and doesn't spin in the water we're going to want to do one right about center right behind where i would put that first hook So we have the lead down in there. I'm going to go ahead and cap that off with baking soda and super glue. Once I get the wire in, first I'm going to go ahead and sand this up, get that all cleaned up. This 60 grit sandpaper really makes quick work. I would suggest using 60 grit. Start it off and going up to 120 and then 200 and so forth until you get the finish you like. But I'm going to keep sanding with 60 until I get it where I like it. Alright, so I'm liking where that's at with the 60 grit. I'm going to go ahead and move on to 100 and then 220. 220 is usually where I end up with these. So there we got it. Got down to 220 where I like it. We're going to go ahead and get the wire through. We got the weight in there. We're going to go ahead and put the baking soda and super glue in. So that's all in place, and we're going to go ahead and sand it one more time when we get that in. Right, so we've got the super glue in there and the baking soda to seal up that line through. Next up, we're going to sand this up a little bit better, clean it up. And we're also going to go ahead and put our hook hanger in right about there, right above that center. Now we got that line tie through there, just off, just a touch off to the left of the line through so you don't cut that. And we got that sanded up a little bit. We will touch it up a little bit more with 220 before we put on a clear coat. But first, we have to attach this little kicker blade. This little click, clicker blade will be coming in contact with our little prop in the back. So we're going to have to line that up perfect, find the right spot for that to go in. So this is what that little kicker piece will be attached to. That's just a little looped off 030 wire, real simple. I'm going to drill a hole right, right in here. Let the snake up and I will mix up some 5 minute epoxy. Put that in. 
Drill that hole. Nope. So we got that little piece in there. Once again, this little blade will just be attached to it like that. And this will come in contact with the actual prop. Makes a pretty cool metallic noise. Now we're going to go ahead and add and clear coat this with super glue. Alright, we got that super glue bath on there. Go ahead and let that dry out for a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead and put a clear coat of white on. I think I'm going to stay away from super glue for the rest of the day. Hopefully that'll peel off. <laughs> Alright, let's let this dry. We just got the white base coat on there. And once this dries, I'm going to go ahead and put on some orange, brown, and black. Not totally sure what I'm going to do. I think I'm just going to keep it simple with orange, brown, and black. Nothing too crazy. There's an orange body, brown, and black back and head. Got two coats of white on there. Now we're going to go ahead and come in with some orange. and dirty so there we have a pretty basic color just brown black orange I was thinking about putting in some vertical lines but my detail brush is down for the count currently so I just have my cheap cheap brush and I think that's gonna be my basic color I'm gonna wait for that to dry I'm gonna put on some eyes and we'll see if I add any detail to it Got my epoxy mixed up. I'm using DEVCON 2 ton. I got a little bit of red glitter and some silver glitter in there. Go ahead and paint it on. Pop that off. I just use a cheap paintbrush off Amazon. Do these. They're 50 pack for like five, six bucks. I do not have a rotisserie, so I pretty much just sit here and spin it. I watch for any blemishes or anything that might pop up. I do have a little bit of play time with that still. Typically I just have to sit here and spin it for 10-15 eh, minutes. It's pretty solid. And that's pretty much it. I'll wait for this to get hard. It should be set by this evening and I can put on the hardware. Now it's time to put on the terminal hardware part. First we're going to go ahead and add the little spinner blade. You got this on a little two little split, split rings and a swivel and I'll just these are light I'll just use my fingernail to pop that one on go a little picker blade down there this is the size 4 hollow metal bleed beads there. Go ahead and put the prop on. As you see, when this spins, this will come in contact with this. I'll show you in a little bit as we put it together. And then I like to go ahead and put three more beads on. Got our three beads on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and twist this wire for the line tie. Put the 
position that so it's going to hit right there. That water will force it into the blade and it'll make contact. I'm going to go ahead and cut that off now. And attach the hooks. I like using these 2x heavy split rings. These are 80 pound. And I've got one uh, owner treble hooks on here. They pair up pretty well. And there you have it. Show you what the action does here. But essentially, this little ticker blade, just long enough to make contact with the prop itself. And it makes an awesome little racket in the water uh, we caught four muskies on top water last year and all four were on a variation of this guy right here and that's not going to get caught on that treble hook no snag no tangling it's a slick little lure and i'll show you the water or in the water action show you what it sounds like i'm going to try and get this on film the best i can Probably be able to hear that. Well, there you have it the wood dowel musky lure. Hope you enjoyed it. This will actually be part of a series. I got a few different sizes of dowel. I'm going to be making pike size, bass size, all the way down to even a little micro size for bluegill. So keep an eye out for some more videos. As always, thanks for watching.